The good, the bad, the ugly week is over. Let's start off a new week with some Monday Night Football and NBA player props. Hey there, everybody. What's going on? Welcome on into a new week of winning bets. I'm your host, Jason Mattis, as always, giving you guys those free sports picks each and every single day. I hope you guys had a fantastic week and what went on in your world this week. And hopefully you guys had fun and made up for the lack of fun that I had because I was still suffering from that hand, foot, and mouth disease. Unreal how long I had to deal with that. It was about like a week or so. I started to feel better maybe towards about fr- Sunday afternoon, maybe Sunday evening. I started to think, okay, I, I think maybe I finally turned a corner. And it's not hand, foot, and mouth. They got to do, they got to relabel this thing. It is not hand, foot, and mouth. Because come about, let me, let give me like a little bit here to kind of like ran or maybe amuse you guys here a little bit. So about Friday afternoon, I started getting a little pain, a, a new pain. I was like, huh, I, uh, that's uh, that, that's discomforting. That kind of that kind of hurts like hell. Like like what's going on? What's what's going on down there? So it's like, all right, whatever. Kind of just soldier through it on the day Friday. Saturday, you wake up, still got pain. It's like, man, like shit. What's going on? Wife sees me like kind of grimace a few times throughout the day. Saturday, she goes, you 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 all right? Yeah, no, nah, I'm all right. Just a little bit of pain, Ain't nothing like this, like this mouth pain I got. That thing was unreal. Like literally, swords in the back of your throat, can't eat because you just it hurts so damn much. So I got no energy. I just wanted to sleep. That's all I did after Friday show. I actually took a nap. So, anyway, so I'm like, yeah, no, nah, it's fine. Like my mouth is definitely still, you know, taking the cake on on pain. Just got a little new pain, just trying to deal with it. Well, Sunday woke up, still got the same pain. It's like, all right. Now, now it's time to tell the wife, right? Wife is a doctor. Wife does a good job taking care of me. So it's like, let's let's go ahead and tell the wife. So it's like, hey, got a little bit of pain. Let's see what's going on. So she, you know, pulls out her phone, starts to do some research, and it's different research, right? You and me, we would drop into Google like foot pain, and we would see how we got foot pain and how to, you know, uh, cure our foot pain. She goes into work, launches into some portal, and she's reading stuff that's been researched and got actual trial data behind it and actual real substance data. So she's like, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, it looks like the pain you've got. Other adult males suffer from this with hand, foot, and mouth. So she keeps reading, and she's like, oh, yeah, this, this is definitely a real thing, you know, and then she reiterates, like, I told you, that adults that get hand, foot, and mouth, they, they get it pretty they get it pretty bad. It's like adults getting chicken pox. Like you, you get it pretty bad. There's a reason why you've been dealing with this for you know a solid week and now you're telling me about this new pain. So we, we gotta we gotta change the label here for hand, foot, and mouth. So adult males can be warned about the pain that is gonna come towards the end of the recovery as you maybe come out of the cycle. It shouldn't be hand, foot, and mouth. This is hand, foot, and mouth and genitals. That's, that's the new name for this thing. It's hand, foot, mouth, genitals. Guys, I spent the three days and all weekend in so much pain. It was like the worst blue ball experience you've ever had in your entire life. And you can't cure. There's no cure for this. It's not like blue balls. You go get yourself a cure. There's no cure for this. you just in pain. Pain. It was brutal. So it's not hand, foot, mouth. Right here, Monday, October 25th. We're renaming it. It's hand, foot, mouth, genitals. That's what, that's what we're calling this disease. It's brutal. Brutal, but like I said, thankfully, I woke up today and I was, actually I knew afternoon, evening, yesterday, pain started subsiding, pain started really subsiding in the throat. Thankfully, I actually had a, a first meal in what felt like a long time. I, I had I had a really good meal Sunday night. I haven't been eating, it's just been too, it's been too painful. Even just clearing your throat has been painful. Swords at the back of your throat. So today, again, I woke up, I feel good. I got a little, little bit of pain in the back of my throat, but it's certainly manageable. It's tolerable and, you know, I'm going to eat and I'll have plenty of energy level. Hopefully even go hit the gym today for the first time in a week. But yeah, brutal, brutal. So hopefully you guys had a good weekend. Was not a good weekend here for your boy, Jason. He was, uh, he was, he was in a fair, fair, fair amount of pain. So yeah. All right. 
Let's move on here. Let's talk some sports. Let's have some fun and talk some sports right now. Let's talk about the good, the bad, and the ugly last week. What was the good? How about soccer? I continue to kick ass in soccer. I remember a couple weeks ago I had my first losing week in Premier League. We got right back on the horse, and we've just been making money in soccer. Remember we had our Champions League midweek. Obviously Wednesday was a lot better than Tuesday. We had a good uh, midweek there in Champions League. And then we carried, carried it over to the Friday. We hit our Aston Villa bet there on Friday afternoon. And then this coming weekend we won money on Saturday where we had bets for the Premier League. Then we also did our Bundesliga parlay there with Dortmund and Bayern Munich. And then on Sunday, we went 3-0 on Sunday in, in the soccer. We absolutely swept the soccer schedule again on Sunday. That's our second consecutive Sunday soccer sweep. I don't know what it is about Sundays here lately, but hey, I'm all for it. We keep putting money in our pocket. So the good is we did really good with soccer again this week, like, like we've generally been doing all week. Bad was the NFL. We, 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 took, we, we took a little bit of a hit there on the NFL. Not a bad hit. We still went 2-1 in, in our player prop, so we made money on player props. It was really our NFL size. Falcons minus 2.5. They only won the game by two. That was brutal. As soon as you saw it, they've been winning all game long, beating the Dolphins. As soon as the Dolphins went up 28-27, you knew that bet was a loser because you knew the Falcons were going to have no desire to get into the touchdown. You knew that they were just going to get down the field, waste time, and kick a game-winning field goal win that game 30 28 and that's exactly what happened they were down there they were in the red zone they probably could have punched it in there was a minute and a half or so left and what they do they then took the knee ran that clock down and kicked the game with a field goal can't argue with that strategy that's certainly the right call but doesn't do anybody holding the minus 2.5 ticket any damn good panthers minus 2.5 they got blown out by the giants that was that was really unpredictable, and they got blown out so bad, they benched Sam Darnold and put in the backup quarterback. That's how bad they got beat by the Giants. So that was a loser right there. Eagles money line, that was a loser right there. Raiders handled them really easily, so disappointing showing there by the Eagles. And then our three-legged money line parlay was ruined there by the Ravens. Ravens got their ass kicked by the Bengals. Bengals dominated them on both sides of the ball. Ravens, other than, what was it, about that second quarter where they got a little bit of offense, they didn't do anything. And defense, they couldn't stop a nosebleed on defense. They were letting Jamar Chase run all over that damn field. They had no desire to tackle him. So, yeah, the Ravens spoiled our three-legged parlay. So that was the bad. We took a little bit of a hit there on our NFL sides. Again, our player props are good. Went 2-1 and one on our player props. We did pull in some money there on our player props. And then the ugly was our NHL and NBA dogs. Uh, both of them were losing money on the week right there. Both of them contributed. I'll do the recap here in a little bit, but I think, I think overall maybe it was like – four or maybe three units or so we lost overall so it was just ugly because it looked like all week we were gonna do bad and then what happened sunday in the nba we hit a plus 367 dog and a plus 585 we only hit two dogs on sunday in the nba we went i think we went two and four or two and five whatever it was but we hit that 367 and 585 that is why somebody hit me up and said why don't you pick and choose the dogs would you have picked that 585 dog to win on Sunday? No, you wouldn't have. You would have you would have, you would have not made that bet and you would have picked one of the, you know, plus 150s or, you know, plus 180s. You would have let that 585 out. That's why if you're doing this, you don't pick and choose which dogs you're going to bet. You just blindly bet every goddamn dog on the schedule and you hope and pray and like I said Sunday getting that 367 and 585 dog to cash. Boy, that really needed. But overall, yeah, it was ugly because the NHL and the NBA dogs were not kind to us. So let's go ahead and jump on into that recap. As you guys can see last week, we went 55 and 80 and down 4.61 units. Hate it. Hate it. Gut it. Absolutely gut it. Hate losing money. Still having a fantastic year, though. Still up 96.37 units up on the year. Let's go ahead and relive some of those good wins and remember some of those tough pains from last week. Noticeable wins last week. How about those Diggs and Sanders? Monday Night Football, we swept our player props. We got two caches there with Diggs, and we also hit Sanders over his receiving yard top. So did very really good there on Monday Night Football. How about Gesicki now? We're now 4-0 betting Gesicki. That's right. We've cashed the last four weeks on betting Gesicki. I don't know why the books. When I saw the number, I think it was on Saturday I tweeted that out. It was at 41.5 still. What other books doing leaving that at 41.5? Do Again, guys. Do not wait for me. I don't know who the Dolphins are playing this week. Whoever the hell they're playing, bet on Gasicki over. As long as it's not elevated too much. They start getting it up in the 50s and 60s. Okay, now we got to maybe actually start looking at the matchup. Who's he def Who's he playing against? How do they fit into the tight end position? But if it's still at 40 again, yeah, bet that shit again. Like, don't even hesitate. My man's gotten us four straight caches. We loved him last season. I love that Gasicki's coming through again. The books just undervalue him way too much. So he was good right there. How about that? Liverpool on that draw no bet sat in this chair last week 
Told you guys, hopefully you bet Leicester on that double chance because they were going up against Manchester United. And I told you, I said, anytime I bet against Manchester United, I got a pretty good feel of when Manchester United's up against an opponent that is going to stick it to them and going to beat them. Same thing happened yesterday. I told you guys to bet Liverpool on that draw, no bet. So I hope you listen to me because Liverpool is way better than Manchester United right now. They stuck it to them, 5-0. Absolutely beat them. Now blame Ole Gunnar show. How are you not playing Paul Pogba? How are you not playing Paul Pogba? Okay, you don't want to play him as one of your attacking four. I get it. Great. Put his ass next to Fred. Get McTominay off the field. If you got a if you got a midfield partnership of Mick Fred, just go ahead and fade Manchester United all day long. Mick Fred is absolutely terrible. That should have been Fred. It should have been Matic and Pogba. Okay. Ole loves Fred. I'm not a Fred guy. I've got I can show you the highlight reels of why I hate Fred. I guess it wouldn't be his highlights, it would be his lowlights of why I hate Fred. They got tape for days on why I hate Fred. Okay, he likes Fred. Put Pogba next to Fred. Don't put McTominay. So yeah, that was a loser right out of the bet. So hopefully you guys went ahead and cashed that Liverpool draw no bet with me. How about Byron team total? That was midweek in Champions League. How sweet was that? Byron do like nothing. I mean, they had a couple goals rolled out by VAR, but essentially got nothing till I don't know, minute 70, and then bang, 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 bang. <laughs> Byron's just, Byron's such a scoring machine right there. W when does Byron play now? So I can't wait to go ahead and bet Byron right there. And then, of course, obviously, we took Byron again over the weekend, parlayed them with Dortmund. Yeah, we love Byron here on the show. How about Chelsea Malmo, penalty kick being awarded? Love that that bet cashed off in the 21st minute when Chelsea was awarded a penalty kick. Just love that that research hit. Spent time on that. Was trying to find a way to bet Chelsea so hard in that game because they were going up against Malmo where every other thing was beyond super juice but found us a good will Chelsea get a PK awarded and that was or not Chelsea it was just overall and I think it was that plus 155 so that was a really good plus money cash right there with Chelsea getting awarded a penalty kick in the 21st minute we also hit on Chelsea to score in both halves midweek there in the Champions League so that was a good cash right there we also chased a Manchester City game this week and we took Brighton over 1.5 cards in that game and they got two cards so we continue to cash City games I'm telling you they're tough City, Byron, those in Chelsea you want to go ahead and lump those are tough games to cash they're tough the juice is always way jacked up so we got to we even cast Chelsea over the weekend Chelsea on that clean sheet we've just been crushing soccer so yeah City is scoring both of those has midweek in Champions League against Club Brugge. Oh, yeah, easy cash there. And then we got two NBA props. We're talking about Clint Capella. Rode him last season. Got a nice cash for his, for uh, whenever. I don't even know what he played. I don't even know when that game was. Thursday, maybe. Wednesday, whatever that was. Got a nice Clint Capella cash right there. And then C.J. McCollum. C.J. McCollum. That should be music to everybody hears. Everybody remember this? Everybody remember this? Everybody remember this? Yeah. You should remember this if you've been on this show. We cashed so many C.J. McCollum tickets that I did a jersey giveaway. I did a jersey giveaway. Obviously, I bought one for myself. That's why I'm still holding one. Can't even remember who won the jersey, but whoever it was mailed them the jersey, and they got it. And I remember them actually hitting me up, and they showed me the jersey and stuff they were wearing. It was pretty cool. But, yeah, we cashed so many C.J. McCollum tickets last season that I did a jersey giveaway. Went right back to him this weekend. They gave us his over three-point total prop. I believe that was on Friday night that we cashed. It was a nice plus money bet. You guys actually got on me right there uh, about never doing another jersey giveaway again because we had bought the jersey. We announced we were doing the free giveaway. And while we were waiting for the jerseys to arrive to myself and the other individual is when he broke his foot. <laughs> and then he was out for, I don't know, however long it was. So the cash cow, CJ McCollum, came to a screeching halt when he broke his foot. So you guys actually got on me pretty hard. I was like, no more jersey giveaways. We cannot jinx it. We have to keep the cash cow alive. So, all right, so no more jersey giveaway on CJ McCollum. But we already started off this season 1-0 on CJ McCollum. Let's see if we can't keep that train going because, boy, we love CJ McCollum here on the show. Absolutely love CJ McCollum here on the show. All right, let's talk about some of those bad losses from last week. What about Porto Milan? Both teams have scored. Milan can't find the back of the net. Talked about it last week. You're going to score against Atletico. You're going to score against Liverpool, but you can't find the back of the net against Porto. Brutal, brutal beat right there. In that same game, we hit Byron on that team total. Byron to score in both halves. Did not cash. Should have cashed, but they had a goal disallowed there in that first half due to a handball build up in the play. So that was kind of a tough beat right there. Jared Allen, he is losing that prop just 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 was just shows why I really hate betting NBA props. If you bet in NBA props, you better have a tough, tough, tough little belly in your because blowouts and foul trouble will just kill an NBA player prop. 
Jared Allen got hit by both of those in that game. The Cavs got blown out, but he also spent a fair amount of that game in foul trouble. So we only ended up one basket short. He ended up one basket short. Brutal that he was in foul trouble in the blowout. Should have cashed that. NASCAR was really tough to us on Sunday. 0-2, Tyler Reddick, uh, top 10. God, it was looking good in stage three, and then it wasn't. And then it just completely fell apart for him right there. And then Kozlowski up over Logano. Kozlowski had early, early uh, tire issues and just never really recovered. Hit the wall. Just just never really recovered right there from that um, early race incidents right there. So Logano was able to beat him. And then our NHL and our NBA dogs obviously contributed to why we were down up on the week. Speaking of that, how are those dogs? Let's go ahead and get a check-in on them. So if you look at this right here, let's go, let's go obviously take NHL first. You can see the first week we lost 1.64 units. Last week we improved though. This past week we improved. We still obviously had a losing record and you're always going to get that with dogs. Don't ever expect me to have a winning record with dogs. We just care about profit. Win, loss, profit like what do you get so the nhl dogs they improved they improved lost just a little bit under half a unit so not not too bad now overall in the season though have lost two units total but they're showing signs of improvement after week one so there you go right there in the nba yeah they, they the dog started off in the nba high so i guess based on this i'm betting nhl and nba dogs this week i thought maybe i was gonna drop it but, you know, once I, you know, went ahead and put this tweet together and kind of put it together, it's just like, well, NG NHL dogs improved. So, okay, I'll give them a third week to see what they can do. And NBA dogs, I'm not giving up after one week. Knowing that they were profitable last season, I'm not giving up on the NBA dogs after one week. So, all right, here we are. We'll, do, we'll We will ride week three NHL dogs and week two NBA dogs. We'll see how it shakes out before we go ahead and give up. So that's what we'll do there. All right, with that being said, let's turn our attention now to a new week here of sports betting. Let's have ourselves a good Monday, start our week off right. We'll get some profit in our pockets, and we'll just cruise on through this week. How are we going to do it here? Let's go ahead and look at Alvin Kamara. Are we going to take his rush total? Are we going to take his receiving total? Well, the Seahawks rush defense, if you go ahead and look it up, it ranks relatively low. But if you look at it week by week, it is improving. So that gave me a little bit of pause right there. They're showing dramatic signs of improvement. And in fact, uh, Najee Harris, he didn't go over his rushing total last week in terms of if you look at what Kamara, his number right there, Najee Harris didn't do it. Because the Seahawks, this is why you can't look at season numbers by a whole, folks. You've got to start breaking it down into smaller chunks. And the Seahawks on a whole, you would look at it and go, well, we'll take Alvin Kamara rush total right there. My man, he's going to have a big day rushing against the Seahawks defense. No, 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 no. It's gotten better over and over. What do the Seahawks do against running backs in terms of a receiving standpoint? They're 30th. The Seahawks ring 30th in running backs receiving yards. They allow 60 yards per game on 6.5 catches per game. Najee Harris last week caught six passes for 46 yards. I think, and I think you guys would also agree, that Alvin Kamara is a better receiving running back than Najee Harris. So that's where I settle. I'm going Alvin Kamara over 30.5 receiving yards at minus 113 over a Fandle. And let's go Alvin Kamara. Catch that ball and run like hell, my man. All right, let's go ahead and do another prop here for Monday Night Football. Let's go ahead and look at the Saints rush defense. Saints rush defense, and this again was on the last three games, although you can literally look at this from the whole season, and these numbers are comparable for the whole season. But again, I like to break it down into smaller chunks. Last three games, they're fourth in the league in yards per game. They're fourth in the league in yards per carry. And they're third in rush yard play percentage allowed. What I mean by rush play percentage is basically if they rank third, that means teams are just throwing on them because teams aren't rushing on them. So they rank third because they have a very low percentage. Teams just aren't running the ball on them. Yeah, of course not because they're fourth in the league in yards and fourth in the league in yards per carry. So this means you're throwing the ball on the Saints. Well, I like Tyler Lockett. Tyler Lockett over 45.5 yards at minus 113 or a Fandle. And then we came down to when I was doing the research last night, it was like, do I take Lockett or Metcalf? Well, Tyler Lockett averages 70 yards per game. That's only three yards behind Metcalf, who averages 73 yards. So basically, you're talking the same player right there. But yet, Metcalf's over-under is 12 yards more. You get Lockett at 45, and you get Metcalf at 57, 58, depending on some sports books, depending on where you're going to look at. What, like, why does he get 12 more yards? Why does he get 12 more yards? He only averages three more yards per game. Targets? He only gets three more targets than Lockett on the entire season. If we look at what they did last week against Geno Smith, they both got seven targets. So it's not like Geno Smith said, I'm going to favor Metcalf or I'm going to favor Lockett. They both got seven targets, and Metcalf only has three more in the season. So why would I why would I take Metcalf in this scenario? You're, 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 you have to get 12 more yards with Metcalf. Why the hell would I do that? And let's not count the cornerback. 
For the Saints, it's Lattimore. He's the second highest paid quarterback in the entire league. He's a shutdown corner in terms of a shadow guy. He shadowed Devontae Adams. He shadowed Terry McLaurin. This guy shadows the team's best wide receiver. Well, the sports books told you who's their best wide receiver because they told you that the, if you look at the stats, they average basically the number of same number of targets per game. They basically get the same number of yards per game. But yet the sports books want you to get 12 more yards with Metcalf. Yeah, Lattimore will be shadowing Metcalf all goddamn night long. Give me Tyler Lockett, who will be going up against cornerback Adadebo. Yeah, Tyler Lockett all day long right there. So give me Tyler Lockett over 45.5 yards at minus 113 over at uh, FanDuel is where I got that one. All right, let's go ahead and jump in with the teaser. We've been relatively good with these teasers. We hit our teaser from this past Sunday. It was actually the only NFL sides bet we hit. We hit our teaser on Thursday night. I believe we hit our teaser two Thursdays a night. So let's go ahead and do a teaser for Monday Night Football. Let's go ahead and take those Seahawks plus 10.5 points and go ahead and parlay that with over 35.5 points. And you can get that at minus 110 up over a FanDuel. I don't mind taking Seahawks plus 10.5. Hell, they hung with the Steelers. Who, who thinks the Steelers are, you know, just comparable to the Saints? In terms of, let's take a look from the quarterback perspective. You taking Jameis Winston over Ben Roethlisberger? I know what I'm going to get from Ben Roethlisberger each and every single game. You have no goddamn clue what you're going to get with Jameis Winston. Jameis Winston might come out tonight and throw four touchdowns, or he might throw two touchdowns and three picks. You have no idea what you're going to get with Jameis Winston. So to me, I thought the Seahawks competed really, really well against a Steelers team that you know is tough each and every single week. You got to fight for every inch of blade on that grass. They don't give you anything, the Steelers. You got to actually fight and claw. And I thought the Seahawks showed really good on the road at Heinz Field. I thought the Seahawks did really good. So you got a Saints team coming to town that may be better than the Steelers, but they're a little bit unpredictable because of Jameis Winston. And I thought, again, I thought the Seahawks showed a lot of fight on the road. Now you get the Seahawks at home. I'll go ahead and take Seahawks plus 10.5 and over 35.5 points is my teaser at minus 110 over a Fandle. All right, let's go ahead now and turn the page to the NBA. Let's go ahead and get an NBA player prop. Anybody know who plays tonight? Anybody? Anybody? Blazers play tonight. Blazers play tonight. You know what that means. It's CJ McCollum. CJ McCollum. Now it comes down to points and three-pointers. And this is where... Call me good, call me lucky. I don't care. But last season, like I said, we were on fire at Caesar McCollum. Obviously, did the jersey giveaway. But we were alternating between, not alternating, like literally alternating, but maybe we would go two and one or whatever. But we would do his points for a couple games, and we would do his three-pointers. Maybe we would absolutely flip-flop game to game, flip-flop between points and three points, point three points. Whatever it was, I was pushing the right buttons and always picking the right one. Well, today I settled on three-pointers. So we're going to do C.J. McCollum over 3.5 three-pointers at plus 155 up over at DraftKings. Look, he's gone in both games so far this season. He's gone 6 for 11 and 6 for 11 in each of those games. So he's obviously putting them up, putting them up a lot. Obviously, he would have cashed his points total in his first two games. He would have cashed his three-pointers in both of his games, obviously shooting 6 for 11 in each one of those. I think this is going to be another game where he just puts up a lot of threes. I mean, this is what this guy does. He's the shooting guard on this team. He just puts up a lot of threes. It's evident that he's taken 11 so far in each of the first two games. This game will be close. They're going up against the Clippers, so there should be no worry. I don't think of a blowout right there. Clippers generally play every team tough. I know there's still no quiet. Leonard, he works his way back, obviously from a torn ACL. But the Clippers are just a good, you know, tough team in general. They don't they don't get blown out, and they don't really blow many teams out. So this game should stay tough. I think he can hit four three pointers. So let's hope I pick the right one. His point total is at twenty three point five. To be honest, it was tough. It was absolutely tough. But at plus one fifty five. I couldn't stay away from that three-pointers. You guys know how we, how I like plus money bets. I'm sure you guys like plus money bets. So hopefully I pulled the right trigger and I picked the right one. I'm doing his three-point total over prop. So let's go ahead and cash that sucker at plus 155. All right, let's go ahead and do the recap. How are we going to make money here on this fine Monday? We're going to take Kamara over 30.5 receiving yards at minus 113. We're going to take Lockett over 45.5 yards at minus 113. Our teaser is going to be Seahawks plus 10.5 over 35.5 points at minus 110. Take C.J. McCollum over 3.5 three-pointers made at plus 155. And, of course, at some point later on today, I'll tweet out my NHL and NBA dogs. I've already bought a couple. That's what I've been doing here the last few days is just kind of buy them all throughout the day. And then once they're all bought, I went ahead and tweeted out. I'll do no different today. I'll go ahead and tweet out whatever the price is. We'll go ahead and ride out these NHL and NBA dogs. All right, guys, this is Monday's show. Go ahead and hit this like button. Let me know. Hit this like button. Let me know you're going to be part of Monday's cash. And we'll see you back here tomorrow. We'll count it all up, and we'll look forward to Tuesday's action. Go have a good one, guys. 
Thanks for watching till the end. I'm Jason Mattis. Any love you can show by giving me a like, a subscription, or a comment, or even just share this video is very much appreciated. And don't forget to turn on your notifications to increase your chances of locking in the same odds as I talked about today. And check out my other great videos in these corners.